Nick Keller is going to kick off and get us started. Tommy Leather, we're underway here from the Ville. Keller's kick will sail out the back of the end zone. We'll get a chance to see this offense here for Murray State. Williams to throw. Has time and has a receiver too. Right at the marker, may have been dropped just shy. That was Jacob Bell on the receiving end. Looks like he's going to be just a few inches shy of that yard to gain marker, which would be the 35. Great job by number 10, Benjamin Perry, playing in that safety position. They call it a star position, kind of a transition between linebacker and safety. Good tackle. He missed all of last game with a first quarter targeting call. Good to see him back. And on fourth down in less than one, Murray State decides to punt. One of the best mullets in all of college football, and that's saying something these days. Orion Phillips, the Aussie's going to kick it off. Quincy Riley lets this one bounce. Picks it up on about two hops and just gets a couple of yards on the sideline before being run out of bounds. On the pass is especially deep over the middle. He's going to throw on first down. Out to Thrash. He's in a lot of trouble behind the line of scrimmage, and he's going to lose a yard. Flag on the play on the far side as Nick Walker came in from his inside linebacker spot to make the tackle. They do need to pick up first downs, which they could not do at all for Georgia Tech. Murray State brings five, going deep. As a receiver, one-handed catch inside of Murray State territory. That's Kevin Coleman. This is what I'm talking about with the touch. Look how Jack Plummer lays this ball in there. You know, any farther out or even any harder, that's not going to be catchable. You got Chris Bell back, Mari Huggins-Bruce, but they added a lot in the portal. All kinds of time and a receiver wide open down the middle of the field. He found his running back, Jawar Jordan. Down to the 10. They'll mark him down at the 11. It'll be first and 10 from there, and Louisville wants to move quickly. He was wide open, Mark. Yeah, he ran a rail route. We call rail route when the running back releases out of the backfield and goes straight up the middle of the field. Linebacker Nick Walker couldn't, couldn't find his man. Great throw. Good completion. Watch the big receiver on the top of your screen here in the red zone. That's Chris Bell, 6'2", 225. Instead, they'll give it to Thrash. He cuts inside, and he'll score easily. And that's how fast these Jeff Brom offenses can score. You look like you're stuck behind the chains on third and long. And then one completion, and then here you go. You're going to see tons of these trickeration plays, whether it's reverses or pitch back passes or wide receiver passes. Jeff Brown loves to wrinkle these things, and you saw it early in the game, getting the wide receivers involved in the run game. Brock Travelstead splits the uprights. Second possession for Murray State, deep in their own territory. Williams, nowhere to go. He's going to be dropped for a loss. Ashton Gelati... Part of this defensive front, Mark. Yeah, I see Gelati, you know, just unblocked and missed some miscommunication on Murray State, trying to and drop back in coverage and zone coverage with the rest. They bring forward. Williams is in trouble. Still on his feet to the 10. Give him maybe a yard after the scramble. Purrier on the tackle. And they'll force a three and out. Third down, Plummer flushed out of the pocket. And sacks as he gets rid of the football. Are they going to rule that he was down in the sack? Our referee is looking at the headlinesman. So grounding, he didn't get the ball to the line of scrimmage. Number 13, out, lost it down at the snow and the foul. Fourth down. I think he was down. I think that right knee was down anyway. I think so too. It'll be a spot foul and a loss of down, so the end result is the same. Williams here on third down. Cardinals bring just three, so he's got plenty of time. He'll look to run for it. No, now he dumps it off and has a receiver over the middle. That's a first down and a lot more. Near midfield goes Cortez Jones. <laughs> 23 yards on the play. It's worked out pretty well so far today, so they may have gotten that fixed up. Third down. Racers convert on their last third down. Won't do it this time, though. Jarvis Brownlee knocking it away. Presumably forcing a punt. Yeah, he was a big get for Jeff Brom. Transferred from Florida State. Played a lot of good football at Florida State. And he's become a leader 
in this defensive backfield room. In fact, he's become so much of a leader. There are a few times that he felt like there could be an interceptions last week that the Louisville should have come away with, and he went to coach and said, hey, you need to run us. You need to run us because we didn't catch those interceptions and make a big play. So he's uh, he's leading that team. And Second down and 10. Easy pitch and catch here, hoping Thrash can do something after the catch, and he does, stretches forward. And that's going to move the sticks. And he has so much talent at that quarterback position. It's just how can he develop with these receivers in this new offense? Garendo to midfield. The transfer from Wisconsin, a little bit of a bigger back with a 25-yard run. Locking up front by the offensive line. See the pullers and just being able to seal the edge. Great job by Kevin Coleman, number three, the wide receiver. Basically the same as a, a successful run play in first down. Straight to the back. Plummer has time, and he has thrash downfield. Can't hook up, but a flag comes in at the five. Just a 15-yard penalty instead of all the way down at the five, so Louisville will scrimmage just outside the 31st down. Howard running by Ice Garendo, 10 yards. Man-to-man -man coverage, they might go back to him. Third down. Plummer to the end zone, has a receiver, but it was defended, and again oh. a flag comes out on Kayvon Reed. Oh, I see that. I, you know. you, you're not sure about that one. He's we'll not see. sure about that one. Cards will try it again. Garendo again in the backfield. They'll hand it to him again, and this time he leaps over and scores. That's what Garendo can do. The power back, 6'1", 225-pound senior, transferred in from Wisconsin. And right here, up and over. Another rushing touchdown for Louisville. Maurice Turner dressed today, number four, as you saw in black, but not sure we'll see him. He's a little bit banged up, picked up. Travels then with the P.A. Williams looks to keep it himself, and he gets banged down, but I think he got just enough to move the sticks, and he did. A ridiculous 50 of them. Yeah, only one on the evening as they look to show pressure with the linebackers walked up. Yeah, they're bringing everybody, bringing the house, and Williams is on his, on his horse, but he's got room to run. He picks up the first down and then wisely slides down at the 45. He got the edge, you see. The good pickup by Cortez Jones, the running back, cutting the blitzing corner. And, you know, that's the you're nervous about. Channing's in the backfield with Williams. Cardinals bring just four. Williams can't find a receiver. Now he's flushed. He does find one, but unfortunately it's incomplete as Jennings wasn't able to bring it in. Good kick by Phillips. Coleman makes the fair catch. Inside is 10. Great stuff. Jordan. Oh, he had a huge run last week. He's got one brewing here. 35-40 out near midfield before finally being run out of bounds at the 45. That's a 38-yard run for Jawar Jordan. I mean, Jawar Jordan is just made of big plays. Hit that big run last week, 74 yards, then that big reception earlier in this game, and here he goes again. A track star, a speedster, transferred in from Syracuse a few years back, and he has been a spark for this offense. Fourth play of 25 or more yards on the day. They're trying for another one here. Downfield, it's intercepted. Zaytik McGee on the pick. It's just floated up there for too long and great job by Zaytik McGee who was initially beat to get back into position and make that interception. Second and ten. Morgan tries to cut mm. it back, nowhere to go. Jalen Alderman on the tackle two yards behind the line of scrimmage. Let's see if Louisville wants to bring pressure, they bring just four. Throws it underneath. Going to be nowhere near the yard marker to gain as Ben Perry comes up to make the stop on Cole Rusk, the tight end. That's going to force a punt. 
And you see the frustration by DJ. He's done a really good job in this game, avoiding some of the pressures and moving around in the pocket. That ball, the deep ball, had a chance. That's Kevin Coleman deep for the Cardinals, standing by in his own 44. It's a good punt for Phillips. Driving Coleman all the way back to the 28. He'll get a chance to return it, though. Can't spin out of that tackle. Cardinals ball at the 31. Loses the well. snap. Ball's on the ground, and Jawar Jordan was able to fall on it. Loss of three on the play. That is probably not how he wanted him to bounce back after the interception. Don't know <laughs> whose fault that is, whether it's the center or whether it's Plummer. So is the quarterback's fault. That's what he'll tell you. But yeah, it does look like he came out a little too fast. That ball just went sideways. Yeah. And you know, again, you know, Brian Hudson and Jack Plummer, it's not like they've been snapping the ball to each other for years. They go back to the shotgun and make it a little easier. Look at that, threading the window. Bye -bye. My goodness gracious. Thresh oh, is gone. The back judge almost got him again. <laughs> but no, he's in for six. Four touchdowns in two weeks for Jamari Thrash. Watch how this ball fits in the window. Right in between the corner and the backer, and Jamari Thrash knows what to do from there. <laughs> back judge. Back judge needs to work on his situational awareness. Like that smooth swing of a pro golfer with little effort. That was that throw and a great run by Jamari Thrash. Murray State trying to stay at. They'll throw on third and one. Williams flushed out of the pocket. Now he goes downfield. Has a receiver at Bell, but they couldn't hook up and no flag. Jarvis Brownlee on the coverage. And now it looks like Murray State may be going for it here yeah, down and this will be the test. How well can Louisville get lined up on the football? This is exactly what the coaches were talking about. Get lined up, get lined up, get lined up. Snap. The carry. This is going to be close. Williams keeps it himself. He's got to get to the 45, and I think he got there. Offensive coordinator Ben Hodges testing, testing Louisville. Give us to Galbraith. Kylan Galbraith. Had a touchdown last week in the Presbyterian game. On this carry, loses two. Williams to throw. Cardinals stunned, forcing him out of the pocket. Now he's going to have to stop and fire downfield. He does have a receiver open, but they can't connect. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I mean, I'll tell you what, what an individual effort by DJ Williams. Jane Thompson, you won't see him. He's injured tonight. He transferred in from Cincinnati. He's another big run. Can Jordan go the distance? He breaks a tackle, and he'll score. <laughs> I mean, you need a big chunk of yards? <laughs> you better find where number 25 is and give him the football. And they all came in the last five games of last year up until now. <laughs> He's got another 100 yards. Four attempts, 113 yards rushing. Didn't beat last week's long, though. This was only 72 yards. And he was fantastic. It looked like he was just coming into his own at the end of last year, and he's obviously carried that forward into 2023. Third and 11. Williams to throw, flushed. Gets a chance to set his feet. Can he find an open receiver? He does, but Bell can't come down with it. but didn't get the call. Good no call, I think. Yeah, probably appropriate. Phillips. Oh, oh, hit, yeah. Picked up by Coleman. He'll be dropped at the 27. Flag comes in towards the end of the play. Third down. Pressure comes. Nice job of getting the ball out. Plummer getting it to his receiver. That was Garendo out of the backfield. Got a hand on Thrash, but I think the official said that's not the cause Thrash to go down. Now the screen. Garendo in open field to the 40. Nice running out to the 46. 
It's 18. McGee finally brought him down. So we may see another play, a replay of what we just saw, or will Plummer opt to go to the end zone? Same formation. Racers bring just three. Same exact spot. Now Plummer's going to hurl to the end zone. And it's intercepted. Watch them return this for a touchdown. That's Reed. He's got blockers in front of him. Pitch it. Pitch it. And he'll be brought down at the 37. Play clock at five. Little push pass. Lamari Huggins Bruce behind the line of scrimmage. He gets brought down. Nick Walker. A couple of TFLs last week, a couple so far this week. Yeah, and good job reading his keys. You see how he extended with the tight end who widened. Just, yeah, really, really good job. You're just wasting our time. Chris? He was definitely thinking the yep. game was 0-0 at the end of the first half. A couple of Hail Marys playing right to the very end. Another flag comes down as Callaway makes a great move. A couple of great moves after the catch to pick up the first down. But again, we got to check the marker behind the play. Proper calls on this drive. So again, Plummer on third down. Trying to set up a screen to Jordan. Gets it into his hands. He's tracked down from behind. No short of the marker to gain. Over top of the center, which you can't, or the long snapper, which you cannot do. Travelstead, this is a much better punt. Fox will take it from his 18, call a fair catch, and that's where the racers will take over. Morgan straight up the middle. Good run on first down. Yeah, and that's that's the issue. In the past, you know, especially in the rivalry against Kentucky. You know, Kentucky continuously comes in with these big offensive lines, and I know obviously not in the ACC, but Louisville fans they still want, they want to beat Kentucky. You got to play more stout up front, and if you are smaller up front, you got to be able to shoot these lanes. Got to get upfield and create these havoc plays in the background, in the backfield, which Louisville just hasn't been able to do over the first two games. DJ Williams with just his sixth pass completion of the day. That was a beauty. Hit the transfer from Louisiana, goal Neke. Another first down. He'll look to throw again. Caught again. This is a nice drive the Racers are putting together here. This time it's Jacob Bell on the receiving end. It is a nice drive, and you know the Louisville hasn't subbed out starters. They're you know they got their starters in the game still right now. It's a good drive by Ben Hodges' offense. Williams with a lot of confidence on this drive. A couple of strikes in a row. Nothing doing on that play. They'll lose two yards. And yeah. watch right here. Look, watch. Look at that block by the tight end on the outside. And then that that collapse of the defensive end. Already the deepest intrusion into Louisville territory tonight for this racer offense. Fumble. Ball still on the ground. Cardinals got it. And there it is. Big play on defense. A lot of discussion on the sideline. This one's given. This program now is up there probably with the top 20 programs in the nation. They have to get a couple more wins and everything, but other than that, it's first class all the way around the board. I really appreciate the time, Ernest. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Chris? Jordan up the middle. Elusive. Inside the five. Still on his feet to the goal line. Yeah, I'm, I'm never calling a design quarterback run if I have George Jordan in my backfield. Goldie shaking up on the play for the Racers. And good push up front. You see 68, Michael Gonzalez getting that push. And Jordan going to get the call. Slams his way in and into the end zone. An impressive evening, got even more so on that carry for Jawar Jordan. Heck of a night for Jawar Jordan. And you see how explosive this Louisville offense can be.
Got to wonder how much of the playbook is really in play with so many new players. And then the tight end, he really doesn't have any experienced tight ends. I mean, he brought in Joey Gaywood, who was a quarterback at UCF. Jamari Johnson, who was a freshman who only played tight end his senior year of high school. It's like, you yep. kind of feel like there's so many wrinkles he can bring in as the for Murray State that we haven't seen. He ran for 40 yards on 11 carries last week against Presbyterian. Give on the end around. That's Isaiah Hill. He's able to get right to the marker. They'll move the stick, so a first down. Nice pass by Phoenix that time. Now rolling the opposite way. Again, left-hander. Now he's looking to go downfield and just throws. This one doesn't throw it away. It's intercepted. Devin Neal shows some ball skills. And Phoenix with a big mistake by not chucking that one into the 10th row. He played 33 games over three years at Baylor. Recipient of a gift here. They really had to, they really revamped the safety room as well. Cameron Kelly transferred from UNC. Did a good job. Racers bring pressure. Doesn't affect Dolman. Lendo again. This time he'll be dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Racers with nice flow. Malachi Williams on the tackle. Third down and a long six. Dome on to throw. Has time, has a receiver. Looks like just shy of that yard marker to gain. Houston again on the catch. That name sounds familiar, by the way. Looks familiar, too. That's former New York Nick Allen Houston's son. It looks like it. Came from Brown, transferred in from Brown, has the eyes. And the brains. If he went to Brown, no question. Fourth down and two. Ball tipped at the line of scrimmage, still might have been caught, and it was. And right at the first down marker. And they're going to pick up the first down. Domon again to throw. Flush for the pocket. Finds a receiver downfield. Flags down. That's Garendo. Takes several racers to bring him down. Let's check the marker. Huggins Bruce has the end zone in his sights. And he hits Pater. Mari Huggins Bruce. His sure handed slot receiver. Good to see him bounce back. A rare fumble. Usually a sure handed guy. Reliable player. Right at 73%. Showing his ability to run a little bit, too. I think that's an underrated part of his game. Brian Brom talked about that this week how he can definitely get out there and run if he has to. Flag down. No, but fumble. And it looks like the Cardinals will have it. Yes, fumble underneath that pile. Cards defense comes out of there with it. Who was a running back and defensive back at Louisville. Back when you could go both ways. <laughs> Impressive player. and Somewhere in there that, that ball came loose. And Quinn comes out of there with it. Kiwan Brown in the game as Conley gets running room up the middle. Down to the 16. How about Conley? Right? And you, you mentioned Conley, and how, you know, he's been here for a long time. I remember back in you know, 2019 when they were playing Wake at Wake, and he came off the bench and had a 41 yard touchdown run on fourth and one in the fourth quarter to ice that game. I remember that. And it was like, oh, this guy, this guy's a good player and he's still here doing his thing. Brown. Showing speed on the edge and lowers his shoulder and stays on his feet out of bounds at the three. More tough running from Cardinal running backs. 
You know, we mentioned Ty Tywin Evans gone. Jalen Mitchell was another back last year, a bigger pounder back. To give to Brown. Ooh. Trying to muscle his way in, and he does. Keywan Brown adds to the Cardinal advantage. It's just hard running. Good push by the offensive line, but that was on Brown. That was a will to get in the end zone. That's something that'll be brought up this week, isn't it? Reunited with his offensive coordinator at Virginia, where they put up tremendous numbers two years ago. Good job to that operator, whoever that is. Phoenix flushed. Now he's going to run, and he's got a lot of room. Will he get the first down out of bounds? I think he's just going to be a yard shy. Half the store at Bass Pro Shops. Yes, I remember that very well. The rainy game we had here a few years ago. Kelsey will be in studio tonight and all weekend long. Ooh, that could be a late hit. Yep, that's going to draw a flag. Harrison Bailey in now for the Cardinals. Transfer from UNLV. Brown on the carry. Ooh. I mean, this is a guy who wants to make the most of yeah. his touches. He doesn't care if it's a 49 to nothing game. He does not. The speed. Down. A player down for the racers. Oh, no, that's not what you want to see. It's like Donovan McBride. Ooh. A fumble on the snap. Bailey will fall on. And think about the experience at the quarterback room. I know. I mean, you've got guys like Plummer, obviously. He's played at Purdue and played at Cal a number of years. Domons, we mentioned the starting experience last year. And he's been all over the place in terms of junior colleges and whatnot. And Harrison Bailey from UNLV. you got Evan Conley, who has played a lot of snaps over the years here in a backup role at Louisville. And just looking now, Evan Conley and Harrison Bailey both are from Marietta, Georgia. Bailey is able to hit his receiver, Houston, out in the flat, six yards on the completion. Fourth down and one, the offense will stay on the field. Brown shrugs off the first tackle attempt, picks up four and a first down. <laughs> Cardinals, are, I got a feeling they're going to roll up some rushing yardage here in this fourth quarter. I think so. Those totals are going to go shooting through the roof. I'm sure Brown is probably thinking... I already got a touchdown on the night. I might be able to rack up a 100-yard game. I feel like Brown wants to throw it, though, so he badly. <laughs> so badly. Guitarist Hicks, true freshman out of Miami on the catch. So much. And he said he had, like, an epiphany during the pandemic when he was sitting at home like, you know what, I think I love football. Yeah. I think it's football. Receiver over the middle. That's... Complete to Gatewood. Cuts inside and scores. There you go, Gatewood. Tight end suits him pretty well. What an athlete. Watch him step up and take on the linebacker, allowing time for his quarterback to get the ball off. Look at this. Block at pass point. That's a solid block clearing it out of the way and good reception. And Jeff Brown is waiting for a tight end to emerge and Joey Gatewood making a making his case. Snap was low, put down. And Lopez kicks it through. 
Third coach Brom. For Eric Phoenix. Phoenix steps up. Has time. Now he tries to loft it up for Bell. No chance on that pass attempt. And it'll bring up fourth and six. And overall, Louisville obviously going to be happy about these results. They've had a phenomenal showing on the offensive side of the ball. There have been a couple penalties. That one interception that Jack Plummer threw that you know, probably was not a great throw. I think what they're going to look at this week and going forward is the, the defensive front, the front seven, stopping the run, setting the edge, and limiting those explosive runs. Six combined quarterbacks playing in our game tonight. Clark's in the fourth for the Cardinals. Brown picks up enough and more. Still on his feet, man. He is running hard tonight. He is. What's a pack of Cardinals called, Chris? You know that? A flock. A flock. I would imagine. I'm sure there's a cooler name than that. To play an interesting game against Indiana. Well, offensively, couldn't do much against that Ohio State defense in week one. What a big hit, and the quarterback, Clarkson, takes it, absorbs it, and rolls forward for a couple of yards. Fourth down and three. Cards will go for it, and won't get it. Brown stops short. Racers will take over. With 114 touchdowns. I don't know if I've ever seen that stat. 114 touchdowns. Mormon to the outside. He's going to get tracked down by that swarming racer defense, dropping him for a three yard loss. Oh, there, here comes 10. I think they just took the headset off of a quarterback on the sideline. Yep, they did. Number 14 is trotting into the game, who is one play ago calling the plays. Signaling them in. And it's Sam Vault. If they pick up the first down, they will, so they'll move the chains. Vault. Oh, and they, they now they're setting 18. This is a this is going to be a record-setting game. That's Sam Young. For the amount of quarterbacks going in the game. Sam Young, I'm not sure if I'm not sure if Sam Young or the Murray State punter Ryan Phillips, who has better hair. Sam Young had that shock of blonde curly hair. You can see it extruding behind the helmet. He was the one that was signaling the plays yeah. in the, all game long. Yeah, they, Young hands off. Mormon. Inside the 40. Good for Jeff Brom, too, of being intentional enough to get all these guys in because it was a big deal. Taking snaps in a D1 college football game, big deal. And that'll do it. Coach Brom wanted to come out and play fast from the beginning. Be sharper than they were in last week's win against Georgia Tech. I think they did that. And the homecoming for Coach Brown.